I messed up. Big time. Hey there, Limit here. I spent the last two months and over 150 hours making this thing called plugins for Project AI Sin. You can probably guess where this is going, but I'm canceling plugins. This ended up being my biggest failure yet, for many, many reasons. And I wanted to share what happened and what led to this moment so that you can be more aware whenever you work on your own projects. It's more relevant to larger projects with a lot of developers and users, but these are also things that you should consider for your own personal projects to save yourself from a lot of grief and headache. So let's get into it. The events that led to the cancellation of plugins stem from one core problem, my poor planning skills. I'm a poor planner, or maybe not so much of a poor planner, but I put my efforts in the wrong places. Normally what I do is I come up with a list of things that sound cool off the top of my head. Then I'll do a quick Google search or ask ChatGPT for some starting points. Then I'll lie in bed with everything that I just read, dream of how cool it would be, imagine a timeline, then that's the plan. I could spend as little as an hour up to several days of just scrolling on my phone in bed. For things that are well generalized and talked about a lot, such as how to draw or integrating LLMs into your apps, it's not so much of a big deal. However, in the tier list of planning, this is basically a C rank at best. What I need is not more time spent planning, but rather a better planning strategy. The problem is that I only plan for when things go right, but we all know that that never happens. Instead of dreaming of how cool it would be, I should be thinking of all the things that could go wrong. What am I missing? Are there holes in my plan? What about after the plan? For example, one of the big killers to component plugins was gRPC. I originally said that gRPC was a good choice for a communication protocol because of its rigid structure. That's completely not the case. Its rigid structure ended up being its downfall because it made it too complicated to fit components together like Legos like I had originally intended. So I ended up holding a 24 hour live stream where I tried to completely rewrite the plugin system in a way that supported what I wanted. And that also fell through shortly after due to the lack of planning and me just being overly prideful in my ideas. For both implementations, I was told by numerous people the many, many problems my solutions would have, and they proposed alternatives that would make the lives of everyone easier. And at the end of the day, they were pretty much right. I know I'm inexperienced. This channel is called Limit Can't Code after all. But throughout this entire journey of making plugins, time and time again, I'm reminded of just how many considerations I'm blind to, and how realizing these blind spots have completely changed how I approach a problem. So to level up my planning game, here's what I'm doing to cover my blind spots. Get a second opinion. This can go two ways. The first is running it by someone else knowledgeable on the subject, or in other words, fact checking. I would do this with an actual person. I can even do rubber ducky coding where I explain everything I'm doing to a rubber ducky. Yes, this is an actual thing, I'm not schizo, I swear. AI assistants like ChatGPT have a tendency to just agree with you. So I would try to avoid them. Those that I've talked to a fair amount would already know that while I like the encouragement of these quote unquote yes men, I value the no men more and encourage people to go against me. This brings out more of the things that can go wrong and actively questions my own decisions. The second way is more relevant to public projects and that's market research. I'm not just talking to experts now, I'm talking to everyone. I'm gathering information for the ultimate goal of identifying a problem. Some big tech corpas call this working backwards or whatever, but I'm essentially asking my customers in this case about their experience pain points, wishes, etc. But I'm not taking what they say at face value unless if it's something that comes up time and time again, such as an easier setup for Project AI Sin. Instead, I'm reading in between the lines to find commonality between everything that's being said and finding a source that causes customers to say what they're saying, whether they know it or not. This source can either be a problem that I need to fix or a win that I can take inspiration from. With all of this information, only now can I decide what I want to do in the first place and start conducting technical research engaging the scope of implementation. I tend to be really really extra. And at the start, I chalked this failure up to me just being spontaneous and stubborn. I mean, I am. But a big fault in explaining human nature is saying that's just the way things are. Things happen for a reason. And for me, I believe my bad habits during planning fooled me into believing this was the next big step forward and ended up doing something that nobody asked for. So there you have it, the problem that led to the events that happened. If you were looking for a more conclusive thought that led me to canceling plugins, it was basically just the overkill engineering and the logistical nightmare that presented itself to both maintainers and the average user. I had realized this only after releasing the feature and seeing how people were interacting with the product I had put so much time into. What I did actively worked against my goals. My goals of making a customizable AI VTuber that the average person can run and an open source project that the community builds together. I'm gonna practice what I preach, but this doesn't mean Mean that I won't make a similar mistake in the future because it's something that happens to the best of us. Anyways, there's going to be a lot of changes ahead in terms of content and how I do things. If you want to stay up to date or just chill with the community, 
I've got a growing community Discord, and I also stream with J.E. Eisen on Twitch. The links for those are down below. And again, this YouTube channel is mainly about my journey in becoming a master programmer and the lessons I learned along the way. So if you're interested in Project J.E. Eisen or my journey, be sure to subscribe. Hopefully this video helps some of you to think about the way you plan things, so I'll let you ponder on that thought. In the meantime, I'm gonna get up and out of your way. Thanks for watching.